Welcome to Rebel Chaser. My name is Gail, and I have two clips for you. The first one is from Judge Chris Martin at the 294th District Court in Texas, and he is hearing a motion to lower bond in a murder case stemming from a road rage incident. The second one is Judge Rosie Speedland Gonzalez, and she's hearing a motion to amend bond conditions to allow contact in a DV case. And in that one, the judge has some very choice words for the prosecutor's office. I thought you guys would enjoy these. All right, Mr. Schmidt, who are you ready on now? Jason Williams. All right, court calls cause numbers CR 23 248, 249, 250, 251. Say versus Jason Rashad Williams. Show that we're set for arraignment in all cases. Go ahead, Mr. Schmidt. That's correct, Judge. Um, we have received the indictments on all four cases. We understand what the charges are, the range of punishment. Um, we would wait for a reading of those indictments, enter a plea of not guilty as to all charges, ask for a pretrial set. You're going to need more time than that uh, February date, considering the number of charges and, and types of charges. Yes. yes, sir. Okay. All right, the court finds that Mr. Williams has waived the formal requirements of agreement. The court will enter his plea of not guilty. Into the record for each charge. The court sets each one of these cases for pretrial hearing on March 26th. Does that, does that seem like it's enough time for you, Mr. Schmidt? Judge, I'm supposed to be out on March 26th. Um, what about uh, April 2nd? April 2nd should be perfect. Actually, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I can't say. What about April 16th? That'll be fine too, Jim. All right, court says Mr. Williams for free trial hearing April 16th in all cases. We also have. Uh, uh, motions for bond reduction in all all four of Mr. Williams' cases, if the court would hear that. Okay, yes. All right, Mr. Are you going to be calling Mr. Williams to testify? I will, sir. Yes, just for the purposes right. of bond reduction. Mr. Williams, sir, if you'll raise your right hand on the place of the oath. Sir, you swear that the testimony you give to the court today will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so if you got it. Yes, I got it. All right, you can lower your hand. Just speak up loudly and clearly during your testimony and make sure you speak one at a time. Allow your attorney to finish his questions before you give an answer. Go ahead, Mr. Schmidt. Mr. Williams, you uh, understand you've just been arraigned on these four charges uh, and you understand what you're charged with, correct? Yes, I do. And you've been in a plea of not guilty and you intend to persist in a plea of not guilty. Is that correct? Yes, I do. Now, right now, now you've been in custody. What date were you arrested on these charges? On the 18th of September. September 19th. And you were indicted recently, and your bonds are currently set in a cumulative amount of one million seven hundred fifty thousand dollars. Is that correct? Yes. Now, are you able to make bond at one million seven hundred fifty thousand dollars? No. Uh, is there a bond bond amount if the judge were to reduce those uh, that you could make? Around forty to fifty thousand. So around forty to fifty thousand dollar bonds total. Yes. And you have property that you think you could sell or, or family that could help you to post those bonds uh, at that lowered amount. Yes. Now, you are a resident of the state of Illinois, is that correct? Yes. And your profession up until the date of your arrest was uh, long haul truck driver, is that correct? Yes. So you travel around the country as part of your job. Yes. Um, now, if the judge were to reduce your bonds and you were able to bond out, would you return to live in Illinois? Yes. And obviously you would have to come back and forth to Van Zandt County in order to appear at your court dates, which we know now the next one is uh, in April. Would you be able to make those court dates? Yes. And uh, you also have would have conditions of pretrial release in which you'd have to report to the Van Zandt County Probation Department once a month uh, and pay certain fees in order to remain on bond you understand that yes and would you be able to comply with those issues yes 
Now, prior to these arrests, have you ever been convicted of a felony offense? No. And uh, have you ever been charged with or accused of bail jumping or failing to appear at any court date or any, any issue like that? No. And are you telling the court that if you make bond, that you will make all your court appearances uh, and come back and forth and, and get this matter tended to, uh, to including trial? Yes. Pass the way. State, any questions? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Williams, what state did you say that you live in before this occurred? Illinois. And how long had you lived there? My entire life. And you told uh, the court that you had never been convicted of a felony before. Was that correct? Yes. Uh, but in fact, you have been convicted of some criminal offenses uh, in Illinois. Is that correct? No. Oh, that's not correct. No, I've never been convicted of anything in Illinois. Sure. Well, have you been convicted in any state? Nope. All right. Well, what happened to the arrest for battery in 2002? That was dismissed before I got to the jail. Well, I don't think it was dismissed before you got to the jail because it shows a bookend number here. Um, what about the um, unlawful use of a weapon uh, in 2013? Found not guilty of all charges. What about the domestic assault, second degree? Not guilty on that one, too. That was just part of the same case. All those were found. I was a clear of all of them. What about the second degree robbery? Never been charged with robbery. I'm sorry? Never was charged with robbery. And um, this says in January 25th of 2013. Oh, that was part of the second one. Yeah. All those were not guilty. All the 2013s went to trial. All not guilty. What about in St. Louis, the uh, domestic was, assault, first degree with serious injury? That was all part of the same trial. All not, not guilty. Were you living in St. Louis at that time? Yes, I was working in St. Louis at that time. Were you living in St. Louis at that time? Yes. If this judge releases you on bond, who would you be living with? My friend. Your who? Friend, roommate. Back mm -hmm. and is that who you were living with before you were arrested for this yes one roommate or more than one just one does that person have any criminal history no and where will you be working be driving a truck somewhere You Look. an independent owner operator? Yes. Do you know what the punishment range is for murder in the state of Texas? Yes. What's that? Uh, no less than five, no more than five. No more than five? So no, no, no more than life. No more than life. I'm sorry. You would agree with me that that's pretty serious, huh? Yes.
And how much is your bond currently? 1.75 million, million. And what have you done to try to make that bond? Uh, called people and just no, it's not attainable. Who have you called? Uh, called my parents. I called my insurance company when they were denied coverage. You called your insurance company? Concealed carry. Oh, sure. your concealed carry insurance company. Okay. Have you called a bondsman? No. So you don't know what a, a bondsman would require you to come up with to make that bond for you? Oh, that's pretty much irrelevant with the bondsman. It's a matter of coming up with the money. And but you don't know what a bondsman would require to make that bond for you. There's seventy-five thousand dollars. Well, you didn't know that before your lawyer just wrote it down for you, did you? Well, yeah, I knew that part. Oh, okay. but you haven't even tried to make the bond that you have. Yes, we have. Okay. What bondsman did you call? I didn't call any bondsman. The person at home called. I don't know which bondsman they called. Okay. So who made those phone calls for you? Anyone other than that insurance company? No. And what did the insurance company tell you? That they couldn't cover it. But as of today, you haven't talked to any bondsmen at all? No. How much money do you have to make a bond? None. I'm not working with that. Oh, so you're just asking this court to let you out on a PR bond? Granted, that would be nice. So I can go back home and take care of what I need to take care of and prepare for this trial. And you don't have any money to make a bond? No. But I have property with that. Do you own your truck? No, that was a second truck I was buying, but I don't own that truck. I was that was a second truck. Do you own a first truck? That truck got totaled. Two, three years that, ago. Okay. So do you own any truck, right? Any semi tractor right now? No. Any semi trailer? No. So you can't work as an owner operator then? Yes, I can get another truck. How are you going to get a truck? Contract out, contract to another company or lease another truck. Okay, so how are you going to get the money to lease a truck? Judge, I object to relevance. We're, we're talking about the ability to make bond uh, and leasing a truck, whether or not you can be employed or not employed is it is a valid question or a relevant question to meet his ongoing uh, requirements in this county, but you know whether or not he can purchase or not purchase a truck is not relevant to his ability to make bond at this point. Your response is correct. Yes, Your Honor, I think it is relevant because I think if he has assets to lease a truck, then he has assets to make a bond, but yet his testimony before this court is that he doesn't have any assets to make a bond. Um, I'm rather confused on, on what he's asking for, wh what his financial situation is with regard to the ability to come back and report on pretrial, the ability to come back and appear before this court um, if he has no money at all, and is his plan for getting that money is to lease a truck. I think it's very relevant to know how he's going to lease that truck. And Judge, that, that was not his testimony. He did not testify that he didn't have any assets. He testified he didn't have any cash, which is substantially different. And his assets are located in Illinois, which may include several vehicles that can be sold uh, in order to come up with the money. 
to post bond uh, with the aid of his uh, friends and family in Illinois. The, the issue is, is whether or not he's going to be employable when, if he makes bond. And his answer or response would be that he would his employment would be to drive a truck. So they're two separate issues. But as far as assets are concerned, he has testified that he doesn't have any cash. He's been in jail uh, and unemployed for some time. But he does have assets, and that's why we're asking for a reduction. I can rephrase my question, Judge. All right, court, court will sustain the objection as, as to that specific issue. Go ahead, Mr. So, Mr. Williams, what assets do you have that you can sell to make a bond? Oh, my cars. And and what? how many cars do you have? Two. What are they? It's an Audi and a Mercedes. And what year is the Audi? 2012. How much is it worth? Probably about 15. I'm sorry, about 15? Yeah. 1,000? Yes. Okay. And and what year is the Mercedes? 2015. And how much is it worth? Probably 20. All right. So you've got $35,000 in assets. Did you list those on your affidavit requesting court-appointed counsel? The Mercedes, yes. I'm sorry? Yes. Is anyone working on selling those assets for you now? No. Your Honor, we'll pass the witness. Mr. Schneider, please. Uh, quick follow-up. Uh, Mr. Williams, uh, when we first discussed your bond issue when you were first arrested, your bonds were set at $1,750,000 uh, at that point in time. Uh, roughly, you anticipated that you would have to come up with give or take 10% of that amount in order to bond out, correct? Yes. Now, at $175,000 uh, to pay to a bondsman, that was not an obtainable, um, under any circumstances, obtainable amount. Is that correct? Yes. And so you had hoped uh, to get a reduction in an amount that you could actually attempt to post but even if the court cut that in half, you would still have a difficult time posting bond, correct? Yes. But you want to have the option or at least the ability to try to bond out while this case is pending. Yes. Now, as far as your assets are concerned, um, when your bond was set at uh, $1.75 million, uh, did you feel like it would have been a worthwhile effort to have your family start selling off things? whatever you had knowing that you couldn't possibly post that bond no so if it were to be reduced you would take those proactive steps to uh, hopefully you're trying to get some money together so you can at this point post yes so that basically at is one of them. at least one of them so, so i still have a car to go to work that's right so that's why um you haven't made very many efforts because it was so so high yes now, as far as work's concerned, you have a CDL license, correct? Yes. And you don't have to own or lease a truck in order to work with a CDL driver's license, is that correct? Yes. You could be an employee and drive a truck locally wherever you live. Yes. And you would need to be employed in order to meet your financial obligations and all the stuff that's going on as well as your living expenses, correct? Yes. So does that clarify your earlier testimony about your what you would do if you made bond? Uh, as far as your employment's concerned. Yes. Pass the way. Great. Briefly, Judge, thank you. So, Mr. Williams, I'm looking at your affidavit that you filed with the court to get court-appointed counsel. Would you agree with me that you only listed one car there? Yes. But you told the court today you have two. Yes. Did you uh, did you own that car, the second car, the Audi? No. Back in at the time you filled out this affidavit. No. 
Oh, so you've bought it since then? No. I just had that car, but it was it just got paid off. So it got paid off since you since you have been in jail? Yes. Paid it off for you? Uh, it came out of my account automatically, so I only had like one or two payments left. Okay, so how much money's in your bank account? None. Well, there was some. Yes, because I got right? you know, my last paycheck paid it off. So there's no money in my account as of today. We'll pass the witness, Judge. No further questions, Judge. Any further witnesses or evidence? Wow. No, sir. Ms. Curry, any witnesses or evidence? No, Your Honor. Mr. Schmidt, would you like to argue? Uh, just briefly, Judge, I, I think that under the circumstances and, and given uh, you know, the way that this the course of this case is likely to go, I think $1.75 million is uh, excessive. I think that uh, uh, given the basically the customs and practices in Van Zandt County, uh, even comparable to other cases, $1.75 million is excessive. Um, obviously, the, the uh, state has indicted, uh, timely indicted Mr. Williams, uh, and we are most likely to announce ready for trial fairly quickly in this case. Uh, but that being said, uh, Mr. Williams' case would be specially set and it may be a year or more before we can get him to a trial. And ultimately, um, we would like a PR bond, but we, we know that that's not likely. We would just like the opportunity uh, to attempt to make bonds so that he can be free and aiding in his defense uh, while this is pending. Uh, but once again, I, I would argue the court that $1.75 million is excessive, and we'd ask the court to reduce that uh, to an amount he could make or potentially make, which would be somewhere in the forty to fifty thousand uh, bond amount cumulatively. Thank you, Mr. Schmidt. Thank you, Judge. And Mr. Schmidt talks in terms of one point seven five million, and while that is the total bond, I think it's important when the court considers the reasonableness of bond to to keep in mind that it's that is for four charges. Um, the murder charge is a million, and then each of the three aggravated assaults, which were also indicted, uh, are 250,000. So it's the total of 1.75 million, not just one charge that is 1.75 million. Surely, surely it's not the, the responsibility of the state here that this man has um, four charges uh, rather than one. Um, it's it's we would contend it's his actions that led to those charges. Additionally, Judge, um, the request for forty thousand is completely unreasonable for the nature of these charges. This man faces uh, life in prison uh, plus other counts that can be other charges that could be stacked upon that life, making it unlikely if he were to receive the maximum on everything that he ever got out of prison. Um, which leaves little incentive, if any, uh, for him to show back up for court, um, especially given the fact that he lives so far away. He, he claims that he doesn't have financial resources, but yet he turns around and assures the court that he can be here once a month to, um, to meet his pretrial obligations and also be here to meet his court obligations. Uh, it's our position, Your Honor, that the bonds are reasonable where they are, given the fact that there are four very serious charges against this man. Thank you, Mr. Schmidt, my word, if any. Judge, uh, obviously we know that this is uh, four, four charges from uh, one single course of conduct. Uh, Mr. William uh, Williams intends to, uh, to push forward his affirmative defenses. We fully expect to go to trial, and we don't expect that the maximum in any of those cases to be levied against him. Uh, obviously, the, the state uh, believes in their case. 
And obviously we would say that we don't believe in their case given the facts and the circumstances. So it's not black and white or cut and dry at this point. There will be a dispute as far as the facts are, are uh, concerned. Ultimately, bond is not to be used as a means of oppression, but so that he will come back and forth to court. Uh, I, I don't think that there's any indication other than his residence that he's a flight risk. Uh, there's no history of that. There, there's no felony convictions. Uh, and whether or not you look at either, each individual case, I would I would argue that a million dollars under the circumstances in this county is excessive. And I think by and large, $250,000 for each aggravated assault is excessive. Uh, but cumulatively, as one course of criminal conduct or alleged criminal conduct, it still sits at one point seven five seven well one million seven hundred fifty thousand dollars. So in totality, uh, those are six excessive, and we'd ask the court to reduce those. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right, court will take the arguments and the evidence under advisement. I'll issue a written ruling at the end of the day. Thank you, Judge. Let's go ahead and get on the record. I thought I saw Leslie earlier. I'm here, Judge. There he is. Okay. Olga, let's get on the record in case number 721743 in the matter of the state of Texas versus Mr. Nicholas Whitehead. Mr. Whitehead, uh, you're on live. Can you hear us? Yes, Your Honor. Have you given your attorney, Mr. Leslie Sahanovich, and this court permission to go forward with your proceeding via video conference, also known as a Zoom app? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you very much. Please stand by. Can I get announcements from the attorneys for and on the record? Rick Pena yes. for the state of Texas. Uh, Leslie Sahanovich for uh, Mr. Whitehead. All right, Mr. Whitehead, your attorney filed a motion to modify bond restrictions back on the 2nd of January. Uh, he will make argument first, present evidence, do what he feels is appropriate and necessary uh, under the rules uh, to move the court to grant your motion. Uh, to lift these bond restrictions. Before I can consider that motion uh, at any level, I need to allow the state to address the court on any added information or concerns they may have regarding the motion. So uh, once I hear from both sides, Mr. Whitehead, then the court will decide uh, how to proceed with your motion. With that, Mr. Sahanovich, the floor is yours. Uh, yes, Judge, Your Honor, uh, I'd like to first call, I think Laura De King is on, should be on Zoom. Let's see, make sure she's on here. Yes. Okay, let's bring her in. I'd like to call her as a witness, first of all. Uh, yes, sir. Is she on? Is she, she, uh, she's connecting here on her. Audio is not connected. Hold on. Your audio is not connected, Miss King. The King. Mr. King, can you say something? She can't hear us, Leslie. Oh. <laughs> you, you want me to? Oh, there she goes. She has it. All right. We need. We need you to unmute yourself, Mr. King. There. Mr. Okay. Mr. Mr. King, can you hear us? Yes. Okay, you're on live. And so I need to swear you in. So please raise your right. Please raise your right hand. Okay. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth under penalty of perjury? Should you make a false statement or lie to the court? I you may put your hand down, Mr. King. Uh, Mr. King, you're going to be asked questions by Mr. Sahanovich and probably Mr. Pena. I need you to listen to the questions that are being asked and answer the question asked only. If you cannot hear the question, if you cannot understand the question, if you need the question repeated for any reason, just let us know so that the attorneys can accommodate you. If you need a break, let us know. If you hear any of the attorneys state objection, stop your answer. I'll need to deal with the objection and then I'll direct you as to whether to answer the question asked or wait for the next question. Understood? Yes, ma'am. Thank you very much, Mr. Sahanovich. The witness is yours. Okay. Uh, ma'am, could you please identify your name, your name yourself for the record? Laura DeKing. Okay. And DeKing, uh, are you the complaining witness in this case? Yes. 
Okay. And are you, are you coming forward? Uh, sorry. Have you communicated with uh, Mr. Pena and myself regarding your wishes to change the protective order from no, uh, no contact to no harmful or injurious contact? Yes. Hey, did you communicate with Mr. Uh, Mr. Pena directly? I sent him um, an email. I sent him that, but he never responded. Okay. Um, and then, so what your wishes today are to, to do what? Uh, to remove the protective order. Okay. In terms of not remove the protective order, but change the, the protective yes. order from, from no contact to no harmful injurious contact, yes. correct? Okay. Yes. And, and do you, uh, are you comfortable with uh, going forward and seeking that? Yes. Okay. Has Mr. Whitehead at any point in time tried to influence you to make that change or is that one from your own volition? No. Okay. So it's one of, of your own volition? Yes. Your Honor, I have no further questions for this witness. I have questions. Mr. King, how are you yes. related to Mr. Whitehead? He's my fiance. Okay. And... Do you have any children with him? No, Your Honor. Okay. How long have you been engaged? We've been engaged for over a year. Okay. And on uh, the evening of the alleged incident, who called the police? I had my son call. How old is your son? He's nine. And is that because your son was present? No, he was in the room. I was um, he was in the other room. I just so, told him so, to call. So the answer is yes. OK, so you had a nine year old present in, mm -hmm. in the residence at the alleged incident, correct? Yes. OK, and you're not married to the defendant, correct? Correct. And you don't have any children with him, correct? Correct. OK, all right. State, any questions? Yes, Your Honor, just a few. Go ahead. Good, good afternoon, Mr. King. Good afternoon. Um, on the night of this incident, um, this happened just before Thanksgiving, correct? Yes. And at the time, you, the defendant, Mr. Whitehead, and your two children were living together at the residence, correct? Yes. And the ages of your two children that we've established are one of them is nine year old and the other one is six. Is that correct? Yes. And that those were their ages at the time of the incident, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, oh, at the time of the incident, my, my, my son was five. Okay. So at the time of the incident, youngest son was five. Okay. Thank you so much. Yes. Um, where was the five-year-old when this incident took place, ma'am? I'm sorry? On the, the night of this incident, your five-year-old child, uh, where was he when this incident took place? In his room. He was in his room. Was he around the, the situation at all to hear anything? No. Okay. Um, now, the defendant at the time, uh, isn't it true that when you spoke with the police, you mentioned to him that you had concerns of his alcohol use? Is that correct? At the, I'm sorry, I don't, I'm not understanding the question. I'll, I'll rephrase did you, the did question. You tell the, the, hold on. Did you tell the police you had concerns about Mr. Whitehead's drinking? The night, yes. Okay, that's a yes, Mr. Pena. Anything else? Uh, just a, just a couple quick more questions, Ron. I guess. Um, has the defendant in in the past been violent towards you, either because of alcohol use or not because of alcohol use? No. Okay. Has he ever shown any type of aggression toward your children? No. Um, since this incident has taken place, has Mr. Whitehead had any contact with you or your children? No. Do you know where Mr. Whitehead is currently residing? No. Is he residing with you? No, no, no. He's not here. Okay. All right. And um, last question. The night of the incident, you instructed your nine-year-old son to call the police uh, as a result of what Mr. Whitehead did, correct? Yes. Okay. I have no further questions, Your Honor. I, do, I, have, I have something I want uh, each of them to do. Mr. Whitehead, I need you to step outside of wherever you're at and show me the, the number of either the apartment or the residence where you're at. And I need you to do the same, uh, Ms. DeKing. Okay.
Okay, stay right there, Mr. King. Okay. Yeah, if I may, Your Honor, I'm not sure the defendant understood your instruction. It looks like maybe he didn't. Oh, there he is. Never mind. All right. Mr. Mr. Whitehead, can you stand in front of the door of wherever you are at now so I can see an address? Okay, thank you. Mr. Sahanovich, any other questions? No other questions, Your Honor. Okay, uh, I'll 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 entertain uh, closing arguments from uh, Mr. Sahanovich and Mr. Ben. Uh, do you have any other witnesses, Mr. Sahanovich? No, I have no other witnesses, Your Honor. Okay, State, do you have any witnesses to call? I I do want to call Mr. King back for a rebuttal question. Okay, go ahead, Mr. Benya. Just one more question, Mr. King. I didn't mention to ask. Um, if this no contact order is lifted and changed to no harmful or injurious contact, do you have any fear for your safety? No. Do you have any fear for your children's safety? No, sir. Okay. I have no further questions. Okay. Uh, I, and I have a question of the state. Is this, uh, is Mr. Whitehead, is this a first time arrestee of family violence? Let me double check, Your Honor. Yes, it is, Your Honor. Okay. Well, I don't know if your attorney has told you, Mr. Whitehead, you qualify to get your case dismissed and expunged, but you would have to do a special program called Reflejo Court. I'm just informing you of that fact. And it's throughout that program that we facilitate family reunification as well. Something for you to consider when conferring with your attorney. So that is available to you, sir. Um, this type of criminal record can impact you for the rest of your life. It can affect your employment opportunities, your educational opportunities. Did we lose him? Yes. We did. Uh, uh, Leslie, can you proceed without him? Yeah, I can proceed without him. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'll hear from uh, Mr. Sahanovich next as, in the closing argument, and then I'll proceed, uh, and then Mr. Benia, and then the court will rule. Hey, Your Honor, I, I don't have any other witnesses to present or any uh, re or any other questions for this witness. So I'd ask this witness to uh, be, uh, I guess, picking off the stand, but not excused, of course. Okay. Um, uh, Miss, Miss the King, you're welcome to stay. The questioning has ceased. Okay, you're, you're off the quote unquote witness stand. All right. All right, thank you. You can mute yourself, Miss the King. Okay, Mr. Sahanovich, you may proceed. Okay, uh, Your Honor, I just have a closing argument. Okay. Uh, my closing argument, Your Honor, is that the witness has prepared, has presented herself to the court. Um, she, uh, she has admitted through her testimony with Mr. Pena that uh, Mr. Whitehead is not a, has never in the past, and and it, and she and she does not him consider him to be a threat to herself or her children, um, and that she has voluntarily. Uh, asked to have this modification done uh, through, I mean, my client has has made the request, but she's voluntarily uh, showed up today to testify, to present herself to the court, seeing, seeing that she's doing it freely and voluntarily. And for those reasons, Your Honor, um, I'd ask the court to change the protective order from uh, no harmful or injurious contact to no contact. State. Your Honor, I'm in agreement. The witness testified that she has no uh, concerns about her safety, her children's safety. If the order is lifted and this incident apparently has never happened before, uh, I'm in agreement uh, for having the order changed for no contact, no harmful injurious content. Let me just say this, and I'm going to make a record of this. I don't agree with the state's position on this. Um, the court is very sensitive to the fact that there's a, there was a nine-year-old and a six-year-old in the home experiencing this incident, whether they witnessed it or heard it, that alone is enough to change their brain chemistry. And the science will show that. And this is a science-based, science-driven judge and court. This couple is not married. 
this couple has no children together. And I'm completely baffled at the state's position on this. What I just don't understand it. But you know what? That's not my role. I'm going to grant Mr. Sahanovich's motion against the court's better judgment. Evidently, the state doesn't care about the welfare of children in these homes. And the state is have a, is, is, has a hand in perpetuating generational trauma. I've made a record of it. Do with it what you want. This matter is um, concluded. I'll go ahead and send the order out to the attorneys. Off the record, Olga. I tried to find a little bit more about that first case, the road rage case, and it was a long haul truck trucker who got in an altercation with another motorist and he shot and killed someone in the other vehicle. Truckers typically have a camera that shows everything. So maybe that will exonerate him and they just haven't looked at it yet. Um, he the judge did lower his bond to half a million so hopefully he can scrape that together we'll see and the second case it was obvious the judge did not think or believe that they were in the same location and i do too and the even the door he showed that could be anybody's door he didn't open the door so we don't know if that was the neighbor's door or whatever so that, that was a little interesting. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time.